Hi there guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Kay and today I'm going to be showing you how to make five different paint brushes at home. I do have another video which shows you how to make 25 different paint brushes at home but these ones were the most successful ones and so this one's just going to be my top five. So let's go through some of the things that you're going to need to make some paint brushes. So you're going to need to have some tape. Um, I've got masking tape, it can be any tape. I've got a wet wipe here, mine happens to be dry, but it can be anything, it can be a floor wipe, biodegradable one, doesn't matter, a nail file, I've got a kebab stick, but this could literally be any stick, so literally I've got like a garden stick here, so it can be any stick, a pair of scissors, and a lollipop stick here, just a wooden lollipop stick, and there is also a sheet of just white A4 paper, this can be a piece of scrap paper, whatever you've got. Okay then, let's get started. So, let's get started with kebab stick because we can make two out of this one. So, the way that I usually cut these is that I find the centre like this and then I just roll it around while just pinching it a little bit with the scissors. I don't try and cut all the way through because that would really hurt my wrist. So I just bruise it in the centre there and then I just get my fingers and just go snap and that gives me my nice neat two halves. So let's start off with my favourite one which is actually the wet wipe one. So you want to get your wet wipe and you want to tear it. Tear, don't cut. And you'll find that your wet wipe tears better one way than the other. So you might have to just find out which way it does best. Then you want to just pull out the fibres a little bit so that they're all sort of sticking in the same direction. And I'm going to choose this one. Doesn't matter which. Um, I'm going to lie it about here. And I just want to roll it onto the stick. And you'll find that the, the fibres grab the stick really quite quickly. Now I want to make quite a small fine paintbrush. So I'm just going to stop there actually. I'm just going to chop off this excess like that. Now if I was going to use this paintbrush straight away, I could probably just go ahead and use it. I wouldn't actually have to tape it because you see that actually I can let go of it and it stays in place. But because I want to put this down and I want to move around, I'm actually just going to tape it. So... Let's just get a little bit of tape and we're just going to put some tape around the neck of it here. And again, I'm rolling it in my fingers just to make sure it's nice and pulled tight, just to stick it to the stick there. And then just with my scissors, I'm just going to just tidy up the tip a little bit there. I don't want to cut off too many of those nice fibres though, because that's what's going to make the actual brush work and I can roll it in my fingers to get a nice tip. So there we go, that's one. Number two is just going to be the other side of this. So you can actually leave this, you could leave one side pointed and you could do this to the other side. So I just like to give myself like a little bevel. So I do this by just running it up and down a nail file and I want to get like a little bevel shape, like a little one-sided point. There we go, so a bit like that. Might do just a little bit more, so I've just got a bit more of a point. I don't want it to be as sharp as that end. That's the key thing. I want it to be blunter and flatter than that. I'm actually wearing out that there. There we go. So that kind of shape. A little gritty surface now. So there we go, so that's two. Okay, so we've got two paintbrushes. The next one's gonna be my lollipop stick. Um, again, this sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on the lollipop stick. I don't like to try and cut all the way through. I like to try and just start it and snap it. So I'm going to kind of start it a little bit there. And then I'm going to try and just open it up and snap it the rest of the way. There we go. So I've ended up with a thick one and a thin one. But that doesn't really matter because I can choose which ends I'm using. Just be careful of any little splinters that might come off. So there we go. Fat one and a thin one. So there we go. We've got another brush there. Um, then we want to be looking at our feather one. So the feather one was really, really nice. I just started off by pulling the bits off the feather and trying to do it that way. But actually, in the end, I just found that I could literally just put a piece of tape around the middle. Um, I know I didn't give this as a list of materials at the beginning, but this is something that you can literally find in the garden. I'm not going to spoil another feather by, by putting tape around, but I literally just put a piece of tape around a feather like that. It could be any feather, pigeon feather, chicken feather, whatever feather you've got. This happens to be a goose feather, but it can be anything. So there we go. That's one more brush. 
Now the last one is quite a fun one and I find that these are used a lot for drawing and I encourage my students to make these all the time. So this is what I'm going to do with my piece of A4 paper. Again, you'll find that A4 paper tears better one way than the other. So I'm going to tear it down like that so I end up with a strip. And actually I am going to do two halves of this. I'm going to do a cut one and a torn one. So the way that I describe this to my students is that I say that it's a little bit like a witch's hat. So I get them to pinch at the top here and just fold and then I get them to just start rolling around. So we roll around and we make a cone like a little witch's hat. Okay, so we've got that pointy end. Again, if I was just going to use this straight away, I would just use it straight away and hold it. But because I'm going to put it down, um, I'm just going to put a little piece of tape on there just to hold it in place. But I wouldn't have to do that if I was just going to use it straight away. And I'm going to do the same with this one, just show you again that fold. So pinch at the top there and fold on a diagonal like that and then just continue the roll. So the only reason I'm doing two here is because I want to have one that's got a cut edge and one that's got a shaggy torn edge. So again, let's just put a little bit of tape there. Okay. Now just to demonstrate to you that these really, really work, lots and lots of people are using coffee to do painting at the moment. So I thought I would do the same kind of demonstration for you. So there's my water. You can see I've used lots of coffee in here already. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of coffee. This is just instant coffee. Lots of people think you have to use it hot, but you don't have to use it hot. Um, and just to show you how fine you can get these, let's just do some shapes. Let's do some nice, thin little triangles and we'll see how precise we can be. So I'm gonna start off with my favorite, which is the um, wet wipe one. So it holds a nice lot of water. So I can really just use it like a regular paintbrush, just dipping it in there. I'm actually going to, I'm gonna delegate one of these to do my stirring. There we go, just stir that up into a little paste. This is great tips for people that are gonna paint with coffee as well. Now I just wanna squeeze some of the excess water out of that. And again, I've got a little shaggy bit at the top there. I'm just gonna trim that off. Just some little extra hairy bits that have just appeared since I've got it wet. There we go. Now, it doesn't work like an ordinary paintbrush that it doesn't spring back. So it'll stay in whatever position you put it in. But that's okay. So let's have a go at this one here. So you can see that I've got plenty of control. It holds a nice lot of paint, or coffee in this case. And I've got a little bit too much of a shaggy end going on there, so again, I can just trim it off. Okay, so that's quite nice. It produces a fairly nice painted effect. You can do sort of larger areas. You can make yourself larger brushes, smaller brushes. So that one's probably my favorite. Let's move on to the lollipop stick. So this one's the lollipop stick. Now the fact that it's wood makes it a little bit absorbent. So it will hold a little bit, but really you have to sort of put a little bit of color down and then you're, you're using the stick to tease it about a little bit. And nice thing about this is that you can sort of use the, the broader, flatter edge, but it's not as consistent as the wet wipe brush. Okay, so that's another one. Um, let's try the beveled edge one because I really enjoy the beveled edge one. So this is quite nice if you're looking for like a really scratchy effect. So again, this is almost working almost like a quill now where the shape of it is really sort of usable and easy to maneuver around. So again, it'll pick up a little bit because it's wood and it's absorbent. You could do this with a cocktail stick as well. It would just be thinner. Um, but you don't get a sort of a smooth effect. It's a much sort of rougher, sketchier effect, but there's plenty of control there. And the last one here I'm just going to show you is going to be the feather one. So this is sort of proper caveman painting here. So this, I did find this isn't actually as absorbent as I thought it was going to be when I first started using these. So there is 
plenty of sort of control there but it is inconsistent with how it picks up and it drops but as a paintbrush it produces a nice smooth laid down colour you can just get different effects depending on how you turn it how you twist it get little fine lines like this so it might be that the right thing for you is actually to use a combination of these different ones so just to run you through again there was the feather one there's the lollipop stick one there's my favourite which is the wet wipe brush there's a beveled kebab stick here we go and then last but not least is the paper ones and you can get a really nice fine little line out of these paper ones but they're not super absorbent they're quite fun you can move them about quite a lot and if you were really really desperate then this would be a completely viable way of doing an artwork. Let's just compare, that one was the cut edge, let's just compare that to the torn edge which should be more absorbent. Yeah, you see how much more blunt the line is. So again, you could probably make yourself maybe two or three different ones, maybe some that are really sharp and really pointy, some that you expect to be really absorbent, some that you're not expecting to be absorbent. So there we go. Those are my top five homemade paintbrushes.